Hello. Hi, sir. I'm from the European Embryonic Stem Cell Society. We are gathering funds for our wonderful research. Would you like to donate for our cause? Sorry, perhaps another time. I insist you support our cause, sir. Uh, I find uh, embryonic stem cell research to be rather immoral. I don't want to contribute to this murder. Since you accuse me of murder, I might as well prove you right. for him to handle. These stress must have caused the arteries to burst, resulting in the death of the unfortunate victim. You're incapable of intelligence. From these wounds, I've deduced that the victim was first hit by a blow to the stomach, followed by a blow to the head. Yes, this was my second hypothesis. Although, are you certain that the wound was not caused by eating spicy Indian food? Whatever. So, from the blows, it doesn't seem as if it could have been dealt by hand. There must have been a weapon involved. Yes, it could have been a bat or a stick. We should look around. The attacker may have disposed of it nearby. No! No, don't! You're going to ruin it! You already ruined it! You moron! You're supposed to wear gloves! But what am I ruining? I have not touched the blood yet! If that was indeed the murder weapon, then it might have had the murderer's fingerprints. But by touching it with your bare hands, you just ruined it. But why do we need fingerprints for this investigation? Okay, every individual has a unique fingerprint. Even identical twins do. Now we should look around for fingerprints. But I do not see any fingerprints here. No, fingerprints are only thin layers of sweat. You can't see them under normal conditions. But can they see me? You have to dust the item with iron or aluminum powder. That's the only way you can find fingerprints. Oh. Let me show you. I will try the column. That's a stupid idea. How many people touch the column before approaching a house? Hey, look, I think I found something. But as far as I can tell, it looks fresh. But how do I collect it? Didn't you learn anything useful in India? No, 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 no. Learning is for nerds. I just paid my criminology professor 100 rupees. Usually we would just use plastic film to lift the fingerprint. But because this is on a curve, we're going to use a rubber lifter. Hey, look, I think I found a strand of hair. Don't touch it. Use the tweezers. They're over there. Okay, okay. Put it in a plastic bag. Okay, I will do that. I have my bag here. And it goes in here. There we go. How do we know that this is the murder weapon? Well, we can analyze the blood on the bat and to confirm that it belongs to the victim. How do we do that? Well, you just take a piece of cotton muslin, absorb some of the blood, now you can put it into the container. This makes sure that it does not get contaminated. And now it must be sent to the forensics lab? Yes. First, we will begin by testing the blood sample found on the bat to confirm that it was in fact the murder weapon. How do we do that? Well, there's two common methods. The first is polymerase chain reaction, and the other is restriction fragment length polymerism. I've never heard of any of these before. In India, we usually just pay the one who gives us the most money. Well, unlike your corrupt society, we actually have to do work for a living. So now that we have the blood sample in a test tube, we must isolate the DNA by adding a special solution. What kind of solution, Robert? This is a very simple solution composed of detergent, salt, and water. The solution is then added to the blood sample. It is essential to stir.
Now we must add a little bit of ethanol in order to separate the DNA from the other constituents of the cell. This will lead to the development of several large air bubbles. The cloudy substance attached to the rod is DNA. Do you see the transparent substance? Yes! This is the DNA for Restriction Fragment Length Polymerism, or RFLP. We must now mix the recovered DNA with restriction enzymes. The restriction enzymes will cut the DNA at specific points in the DNA sequence. We can control the specific points at which the restriction enzymes cut the DNA sequence through the use of different types of restriction enzymes. What are the restriction enzymes that there are in use? Well, it is a pretty long list. To name a few... <laughs> For our purposes, we will be using HPA1, which cuts between the nucleotide bases GTT and AAC. Oh yes! I remember learning this in biology class with my favorite teacher, Miss Hillingworth. We use electrophoresis gel to sort the DNA fragments, do we not? Right you are. The fragments are put at the end of a foot-long block of gel, then the gel is zapped with several hundred volts of electrical current. Yes, yes, the current causes the fragments to move towards the other end of the block of gel. The shorter fragments move farther and faster than the longer ones. So once the current has been shut off, the fragments are lined up according to length. In order to make the DNA fragments visible, an ultra-thin nylon membrane called a blot is placed on top of the gel. The blot soaks up the DNA pattern intact. Then synthetic DNA called a genetic probe is applied to the blot. While all of the DNA contained in the sample has been transferred from the gel to the blot, the probe DNA is designed to attach itself to the polymorphic fragment. and the rest of the DNA is washed off, leaving just the unique fragments. The probe material is radioactive, so when a piece of X-ray film is pressed against the blot, a photo called a audio radiograph, uh, it is called a autoradiograph, my, my mistake, is created, containing the barcode pattern of a DNA fingerprint. <laughs> I compared the DNA sample to the Interpol DNA data bank and it seems his family is highly susceptible to sterility. This is a disgrace. No Indian would marry into this family. However, it's a perfect match. The bat was in fact the murder weapon. Shall we now analyze the hair sample found at the crime scene? Yes, for this we will use the technique of polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. We begin by extracting the DNA. We must now take the hair sample and separate the follicle. The follicle must now be mixed with PCR mix. What does this consist of? It consists of tack polymerase, buffers, DNA primers, and deoxynucleoside triphosphate. Do you know what buffers are? I, th I think I learned this in Ms. Hillinger's 11th Standard Biology. I think it provides a chemical environment for optimal activity of, for the DNA polymerase. 